Fry Fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday to you. Hope everyone had a great fishy week and has some great fishy plans. I know myself, I'm pretty stoked to be hanging with my boy Scott from King and Queen Sick. Let's check out his channel over here. Uh, Scott and I are going to be hitting up two local fish stores, going to an event in one of them, and uh, just overall shenanigans for the weekend, so I'm pretty excited. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to pimp out your hang on back filter, how to hot rod it, how to use some do it yourself goodness to make it more efficient. Now, I am not the king of DIY. However, I have done some DIY stuff and I'm pretty good at it. So, here are my tips and tricks on how to pimp out your hang on back. Some of them we sort of went over in the uh, previous video I talked about this filter, uh, but this is a little bit more detail. So, if you remember uh, a couple of videos ago, I bought this top fin hang on back filter from PetSmart. Uh, it was 50% off for Black Friday, so it was only $10. I couldn't pass it up. And uh, of course, you're thinking to yourself, Mike, why are you talking about hang on backs? You love sponge filters and box filters. You're old school. And I do love them. They're easy to maintain. They're easy to set up. They're overall easy, just like I am. But I like to use a hang on back filter uh, to sort of help with the mechanical filtration. In a lot of my Pleco tanks, there's just a legitimate poop ton see what I did there, of mulm. And while I think Pleco's like to breed in the mulm, while when you take Pleco's out, bag them up and ship them, you don't want any of that mulm in the bag because it looks bad. So I will put a hang on back filter in some of the tanks to help clean up the mulm because I'm too lazy basically to gravel back. I just don't have the time, 55 tanks, you know what I'm saying. So I had an old Marieland 350 that I put on the lemon pleco tank and that does a fantastic job. And every now and again, I move it to Chewy's tank or I move it to the Oscar tank just to help clean up a little bit. And when I saw these filters on sale, I bought a couple and I've been rotating them through the tanks. But in a couple of the pleco tanks, you know, I double up on the real estate, meaning I breed for profit plecos and guppies in the same tank. Cha-ching, double the profit. And the problem with that is, um, if you put a hang on back filter with an intake with these holes in it, it's going to suck up some of the fry and you're not gonna be as profitable. So, what do we do? Well, sometimes I use, like to use this pinky filter floss and I use it on some of the overflows of my auto water change system. So, just a quick lesson, water flows into the tank, the tanks are drilled, there's a standpipe with one of these um, intakes. And this also has pretty much the same size hole. So what I do is I wrap the pinky filter floss around it, and then I hit it up with a wire tie, and boom, I have an intake sponge. It's cheap, it's efficient, it's easy, just like me and how I like it. But, but, there's another option you can actually buy intake sponges for hang on back filters or really for any filter. It'll work for any filter. And uh, one of my subscribers and actually uh, a great person who I've bought fish from before, Barbara out in California, told me about these little uh, sponges she uses. She gets them on Amazon and so did I. And they're, they're for pool supply hose scrubber. I'll put a link in the description below. It's going to be an affiliate link. If you click on it and buy anything, I make like $300,000 each time you click. So, you know, keep doing it. Anyway, um, it comes 10 to a pack. I think they were like 10 bucks. So they're a dollar a piece. And there's one small issue with them. The hole in them is really small. So you either have to um, sort of open up the hole by cutting the inside a little bit, or you just cut it, clamshell it, psh, wire tie it on to whatever you're doing. So here's what we're gonna do for the hang on back filter intake sponge. We're just gonna take the tube out and uh, what I've done is I've taken a couple already and I've made the hole a little bit bigger on the inside. So we're just gonna slide it on the intake side. And what's this gonna do is allow water and particles to get sucked up into the filter, but not itty bitty tiny cute delicious fry. And these intake sponges that I bought, the pool hose scrubber sponges, are a little short as well for this intake. So I just used two. We'll just show you the do-it-yourself ingenuity. There you go, folks. That's what it looks like. All right? Now, that's the intake. That, like I said, will allow particles uh, to be sucked through. 
but not fry, which is the most important thing. How else can we make this bad boy more efficient? Well, this particular filter <coughs> comes with this piece of crap blue plastic, which is supposed to be your um, biological filtration. The biological, uh, the beneficial bacteria will adhere to the plastic and all these extra little pins uh, to create surface area and more filtration. Now, I still use this, but really just to keep the filter media in place. What I do is, I, obviously you put that in the slot where it belongs, and then I love Lava Raw, which I talked about a little bit in the last video. There's also gonna be a link for this in the description below. Now, somebody told me about pumice stone. It's even better, they said, because it, it has more surface area. So you get more bang for your buck, which I love bang for the buck, you know that. I just wonder, is it worth it? Like, is, is the, the additional beneficial bacteria actually gonna be worth it to try something I've never tried before? I don't know. In addition, Lava Rock is inert. It doesn't do anything to water chemistry. I don't know if pumice stone does or not. You can look it up on the interwebs if you like. However, I like uh, when I try something and I know firsthand before I recommend it. So, I'm gonna stick with the Lava Rock. Now, just a quick lesson about beneficial bacteria in general. Beneficial bacteria will only grow as big as our food source allows. What does that mean? Well, that means if you have a biological load, let's just say of 10, that number means nothing, it's just a number, it's 10, and three of these lava rock pieces um, will house enough beneficial bacteria to uh, convert the ammonia to make it zero, it doesn't matter how much more biological uh, filtration you add, you're not gonna get any more beneficial bacteria. I hope I explained that right. Try to make it as simple as possible. Anyway, that's enough of that lesson. All right, so uh, you put some lava rock in the bottom. How much lava rock do you need? Don't really know until you set it up and, and start checking water parameters. We'll go over that later. After the lava rock, I take some of the polyfill. Links also in the description below. Just take a clump. I try to take one clump that's attached. Put it in there. Done. Now, you have an intake sponge, that's gonna increase your beneficial bacteria. You have uh, filter floss, that's a mechanical filtration, as well as increase your beneficial bacteria. Of course, the lava rock for the beneficial bacteria and the crappy blue plastic thing for the beneficial bacteria. You're done. Pimping it out. That's all I recommend, that's all I would do. Let's set it up on a tank and take a look. All right, fishy folks, there we are. Now. The holes in this are a little small, so a lot of the big particles are just gonna stick, which is fine. Uh, all you're gonna do is, before you shut it off, put a little cup or something underneath it, sh unplug it, lift it out of the water, and all the debris and detritus will uh, be in your little cup. Quite an easy little tip there. So we have the uh, intake sponge, we have the lava rock inside, we have the filter floss, souped up, do-it-yourself, more efficient hang-on back filter. And again, you don't have to just do this to a top fin. You could do it to any other brand, a filter, uh, hang-on back filter. You can use the intake sponges in um, uh, canister filters. You can use a lava rock in canister filters. You can use all this in do-it-yourself stuff. Hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys liked it. And uh, don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com. Check out my buddy Scott's channel, King and Queen Cichlids. He also has a Facebook group, King and Queen Cichlids. And of course, a website, kingandqueencichlids.com. Hopefully we'll get some footage from our shenanigans. Maybe go live and have a great time. All right, fishy folks. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Check out my buddy Scott's channel, King and Queen Cichlids. He also has a YouTube, uh, I mean, oh. Hi fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday to you. In today's fry centric video, we're gonna go over actually pimping out your hang on back filter for real. Not just, uh, you know, hey, you should do this, but I'm gonna show you what I do. Or what I would do if I used hang on backs, but 
That was silly, so I should probably start again. Hi fishy folks and happy Fryer Fryer Friday to you guys. Before we get started, do me a favor and just obliterate the notification. No, don't do that to the notification bell. You gotta, you gotta do something else. Hi fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday to you. Guys, do me a favor. Before we get started, check out my friends Scott and Liz, King of Queen of Cichlids, link here and down below. And also my friend Graham from Aquarium, uh, Aquarium Adventures. It'd be nice if I could speak. Hi fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday to you. Guys, before we get started, do me a favor, pause this video. Head on out to King Queen Cichlids, King and Queen. <coughs> I'm fine. Hi, fishy folks, and happy Fry Fry Friday to you, guys. Do me a favor before we get started. Uh, head on over to King and Queen Cichlids on YouTube. Link what? Of course, it's on YouTube. Oh, Jesus Christ! Hi fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday to you guys. Before we get started, you know the drill. Just obliterate that subscription button if you haven't done so already. And uh, gently boop the notification bell. And when we're done, check out michaelsfishroom.com. So today on the today's... Oh, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Hi fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday to you guys. Before we get started, do me a favor and just... Uh, do something. Hey guys, happy. Oh. Hi, fishy folks, and happy Fry Fry Friday to you. Hope everyone had a good week and has some good plans. I know I got some things going on. Hopefully, I'll be hanging tomorrow with my buddy Scott from King and Queen Cichlids. Don't forget to check out his channel, link in the description below, and possibly somewhere in this general area as well. Uh, and of course, check out michaelsfishroom.com. Lots of things are on back order, but as long as we don't get, you know, sub uh, 32 degree temperature, we'll be shipping, so don't forget to buy. Gift cards are available for the holidays. All right, folks, in today's video go, video go? All right, folks, in today's video go, we're gonna talk about how to pimp out your hang on back filter. Uh, if you remember a couple videos ago, I uh, bought some of these top fin uh, 20 to 30 gallon hang on back filters. They were on sale for Black Friday, 50% uh, off, so they were $10. And um, I currently use them. I move them from tank to tank to clean out mom um, in some of my Pleco tanks. And because I do breeding for profit and I uh, double up on the real estate, I breed Plecos and guppies in the same tank. I can't put this filter with this intake because of the holes in the same filter because it'll suck up fry. So what do you do? You need an intake sponge. Now, you can buy intake sponges uh, that are actually designed for hang on back filters, but they're a little pricey. Um, and I don't like spending money. And so I use sometimes pinky filter floss, which I just wrap around, which you've seen you know, on some of my overflows. Of course, now that I'm looking for one, I can't find it. Stand by. It'd be so much better if I was prepared. So much better. 